Talk about creepy. Is he knocking? Gerald from Two Peas on a Podcast is here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gerald. Hi, Gerald. Hi, Gerald. Hello. Great segment, guys. Now, we're also, ladies and gentlemen, joined by the human troll doll himself, Justin Damn Escobar. It. I thought you were going to forget about that. Oh, oh yes, are you on your, that's through your laptop mic, it sounds like, or through your onboard microphone, not the oh, extra microphone. Oh, no. Hold on a second. Do you, mean, do you mean troll doll as in, like, trolls or as in, like, internet troll? Because of, of the hair, dude. Yeah. yeah I, know, I know. I know. Now, look at. What, are you in a storage closet somewhere? I'm in my fucking garage, bro. My whole family's home. Oh. And, uh, go ahead and full disclosure, my my kids could show up literally at any moment. Wow. So what you're He's saying is we'll get Gerald off the screen, but we're just going to play the Yuan Kazoo video again. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll have cute kids to talk to you for 25 minutes. Well, if the kids come by, we'll definitely switch back. But <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Gerald. Yeah, man. What's up, dudes? What's up, brother? We love you. You know we love Justin's you. Justin's good. Check one. Check one. Is it coming through right now? Uh, no. It still yeah, sounds like you're happy. on the computer microphone, oh. not the not the actual ATR. Hold on. Did Loy Sauce break it yesterday? Did you let Loy Sauce touch it? I'm gonna leave and come back in. Okay. All right. I think you let Loy Sauce touch it yesterday. That has to be what it is. So the computer, or what's it exactly? Whatever you think it is. <laughs> so I mean, come on, us, you know what I mean. You look a little tired. Uh, I am. Uh, like you've been dealing with a newborn, man. Like well, that. But I had a late wedding last night, so I was oh. up. That was a, my last wedding DJ event last night. Last wow, month. that's it. I'm hanging so it up, done? man. Wow, I'm why? Yeah, I'm done. maybe selling my equipment and. Had to get rid of one thing in my life, you know. I have all the kids, and then of course my real job, quote unquote real job. So, yeah. got rid of the wedding DJ business, man. Last night was the last gig. It was a lot of fun, though. It was uh, a longtime friend of mine, so it was cool to kind of go out like that with somebody I've known for like twelve years. So, oh, that's nice. That's good. It was cool, man. It was a uh, it was going out with the bang for sure. It was uh, it was a fun time. We are so Gerald just I, had a brand new baby. Who I did. If he had a beard, would look exactly like him. The baby is literally a Seriously, spitting image of Gerald. Yeah. Like 100%. Give that baby a beard. I might, I, might uh, get, I might be able to get my wife to bring him out before the half hour's over. I don't know. He might be sleeping. If he's sleeping, I'm not messing with him. <laughs> Believe me. He's he's but, not old enough yet to understand, but when yeah. he gets old enough, please apologize to him uh, for <laughs> all the trouble he's going to have with women, you know, as he grows. He needs to take a different path, bro, because he's already... <laughs> He's already lacking in the face department. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So look, dudes, uh, first of all, you know, I love you guys. Okay. Yeah. Epic phone guys. Yes. Nick, Justin individually. Yes. Love you guys. Giant fans have been for a few years now. Friends of, with you guys. We're just going to keep using that sound drop through the rest of the day. <laughs> it scared me. Uh, friends with you guys, but I love what you guys do, and this is by far uh, the top, the, just the top of the cake, man. We love you, you guys, brother. Awesome thing. I'm so proud of you guys. You already hit your goal. I saw that. I woke up this morning. You already hit your goal. Two days. Yeah, we don't even need you anymore, Gerald. Get out of here. Look at my ear. <laughs> <laughs> just be donating money. Why am I here talking? Okay. Well, what we're gonna do? Okay. So my show, for those of you that don't know, and I guess I should tell everyone, Nick, we're coming back in June, so we're on hiatus. Thank uh, we'll Lord. have a new episode, we'll have a new episode <laughs> in a few weeks. And our good friend Jeff from the Cadaver Cast did a show with me for our top five best Oscar winner movies. Nice. And that's going to be up in June. And then me and Andy are laying a couple down. We're going to do summer blockbusters and we're going to do our top five Justin Timberlake songs. So all Great those job. are on the live for the month of June. So I'm very excited. So we will be back in your ear holes very soon. What I'm going to do today, because we do a top five show. You guys this, know that. You guys this. have both been on. So we're going to do a top five list, and we're going to go around the horn. Justin is here. Yes. Justin, are you good audio-wise now? You're good. Do right? I sound better? Yes. And you always sounded fucking perfect. I'm just making though. sure it's like it's not coming through <laughs> my computer speakers or whatever. Yeah, it, it was coming so. through. It was going into the computer mic before. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. All righty. All righty. Uh, so we're going to do top five overcoming the odds movies. Obviously, we're saying fuck cancer this weekend and the live stream for the cure is all about 
the research, cancer research. And obviously, you have to overcome the odds if you are diagnosed with it or if you know someone that is or if it affects you directly. So I thought it was appropriate. Plus, there's a lot of great movies to pull from. And we have the epic film guys. So, I mean, who else am I going to talk movies with, right? So let's do top five overcoming the odds movies. And I know, Nick, did you you made a list when I emailed you or did you just kind of come up with it on the fly, brother? Um, I'm kind of kind of in the middle. I, I've, okay. I've I've got a couple of ideas, but <laughs> I know well, I know one that'll be on his list, though. That's for sure. Hey, you I should have a crossover there. It might have a crossover. Just saying, just letting you know. I just made my list this morning. I've been so busy this weekend, and uh, there was a. I was ex- surprised, honestly. There's a lot that I just I love so much that I wouldn't have really put in this category, but they do fall in this category. They're inspirational. They're about overcoming the odds for for various reasons. I got a couple comedies on there. I got a couple dramas on there. Uh, Justin, you just made your list, right? Yeah, <laughs> talking, I just, just did this morning. That's correct. Yeah, that's right. So that's awesome. it's, it's it's not my definitive list, but it is a list nonetheless. Right. Nick, will you keep me updated in the chat if anyone has any suggestions? Because We I threw, definitely uh, will. You guys, make sure you let us know. Let us know. Um, what are your favorite movies about yeah. overcoming the odds? Overcoming yeah, the odds. Favorite movies about overcoming the odds. Get them in let there in the chat. Are. So who wants to go first? So I guess you and Justin had separate lists, right? Yes, we have separate lists. So who wants to go first? I'll let one of you dudes go first. I, Justin's going first. All right. All right. Sweet. All right. So this is a movie that I don't watch very often these days, but in the late 90s, I watched it all the time with my dad. Uh, it's about a young, small man that was told he was too little to play college football, but he was determined to overcome the odds and fulfill his dream of playing for none other than Notre Dame. Yes. It's Rudy. Trying yes. Sean Aston. Low. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to say low in honor of our brothers in Australia. But yes, great film. 1993. That's Sean right. Aston. Charles S. Dutton in that movie. Am I right? Yeah. And John Favreau did, I think, one of his first starring roles in that movie yeah, as well. Yeah, he we'll played his this. roommate. Gerald, you ready? Here, here. How dare you? There you go. <laughs> How's that in, man? You got to have that ready. You got to have that queued up for when we do top fives. Uh, I love Rudy. It's coming up on my list. Nick, how you feel about it? I know you usually hate movies that everyone else loves. So what do you it's, think? <laughs> it's fine. I haven't seen it in a okay. long time, but I don't remember it. I don't like remember it like, oh, my God, or anything. <laughs> I love Rudy. I'll be talking about it here in a minute. Nick, what's your number five, man? Man, shit. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know that one. It sounds like you would have to overcome some odds, though. My oh, my odd that I have to overcome. My number five is uh, the live stream for the Cure Three. Nick making this list. That's my <laughs> that's my <laughs> number. Do you want me to go next? Do you want me to you go, go next, next, man? I'm right. I'm only like cor- a quarter prepared for this segment. All right, I'll go. Uh, I'll go next. My number five is a comedy that I absolutely love. I tell you what, man. Um, Wes from Via VHS is a good buddy. He was on the fantasy movie draft a couple weeks ago, and they did 1989 movies. And oh, I was like, you're really going to bring this. I think, I think it's my number four too. Is it? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, Wes is going to pick this. We're good. Nobody picked it. Okay. We're talking 20 movies from 1989. Nobody picked it. Major league. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, just, I mean, just an all time comedy, dude. Charlie Sheen really kind of getting his huge break there. Just hilarious, man. Corbin Burnson. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, it's just, it's funny. So, you know, there's no like dramatic kind of effect as, as far as overcoming the odds are concerned. But, I mean, it's a shitty baseball team. It's a bunch of, of B and C players that got together. They they used their teamwork, overcome the odds, and they ended up winning the pennant, the Cleveland Indians. And it makes you feel good. It's hilarious. I laugh every time. Wesley Snipes, one of his first roles. It's just great, man. I mean, there's never a time that I see this movie that I'm not laughing and having a good time. So, Major League is my number five. Man. What do you guys think? I like well, it. it's it, it's my number four. So yeah, nice. it's, it's it's literally guys the first rated R movie I ever watched. And I remember uh, creeping downstairs late one night and seeing my dad starting to watch it. And he's like, "Come, come you know, it was a school night, but he's like, "Come on down!" Like he let me watch it. I felt like so awesome that he was letting me watch a rated R movie. I just I love it, man. I love yeah. Major League. It's fantastic. I watch it almost once every two or three years during the spring season because it's one of those movies that just invokes that spring-summer feeling for me. I agree, man. It's a good time. Nick, you into that one? 
I've got to be. God, I can't even. Don't I probably that. haven't seen it since the eighties. Wild thing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You know, fucking the Charlie Sheen cut, which I've still yet to get. I will get that cut, Gerald. Oh, I don't either. I don't have that either. I, my, I promised my wife I would get the haircut, dude. So Drew oh, Hallam says, it. "Heavyweights, little giants, the pursuit of happiness." Yeah, actually says we'll cool runnings. Cool runnings are going absolutely. Yeah, Will Smith actually kind of shows up in a lot of these. I don't yeah, know if he you does. Saw. Yeah, I don't know if you got this was his shtick in like the late two thousands. Like, yeah, man, Will Smith was coming a lot. No, it's like pretend at least. Um, okay, uh, Nick, did you you gathered your? I totally. You got- I was trying to put this list together, and then I looked at my list. I was like, wait a minute. Like, I had two movies written down. I was like, no, that doesn't fit the brief because I thought it was like something else, <laughs> and then. Yeah. I started looking up like, okay, I got to look at lists to, so I can try to collate something here. But then all my lists were like, you know, giving me movies like, like it's a wonderful life or something. Yeah. Well, I'm well, like, that was definitely going to be on your list. I don't yeah. think that's an overcoming the odds movie though. Sure it is. It's inspirational. Yeah. It's definitely, it's gonna definitely play inspirational. Play. It's 100% inspirational, but I don't like his, the only odd that George yeah. Bailey has to overcome is himself. <laughs> Which is a really big one, so I would so, still consider it. I don't. I, I don't would count it. it no, nope. especially so I'm as out, Nick. I'm out, man. I'm just gonna let you guys do it, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in with some stuff here and there. Okay, so me and Justin will just go. Back I'll and just forth. I'll just derail the segment right. every time I have to talk. I was gonna say you might have to derail because I feel like me and Justin might cross over quite a bit. <laughs> we already did twice, actually. God damn it! I knew <laughs> it. Oh, good so, for you. <laughs> Hey, but great, great mind think. Great minds think alike. But Drew, Drew Hallam in the, in the chat though with with Little Giants. That's what I did not think about, but I did I watch that a lot as a kid. Great movie. I didn't think about that one or Cool Runnings that our girl yeah. Ashley said, but those are both great. Well, cool you said number four for you. That's right. Right. That's right. So I'll give my number four. My number four is a dramatic film. What list? Let's be honest, guys. If we're doing a top five list, you got to find a way. At least me to squeeze Tom Hanks in there. I mean, am I right? I mean, any list, any topic, let's find a Tom Hanks movie and put it on there. Or the list is not complete. I like it. So my number four is Castaway from 2000. Great choice, now, man. Hey. Now you, talk about, you talk about overcoming the odds, guys. See, I didn't even I mean, think of that. <clears throat> what else do I have to say here? I mean, alone on a deserted island. A pl- well, first of all, the plane crash. All right. So he had to survive that. Then he's alone on an island, you know, and he's there for however many months it was. Uh, do you remember Justin? I feel like he was there for like two years or something. Yeah, crazy. pretty much. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure it was that long. Yeah. Yeah. And then he ends up, you know, kind of fashioning his own raft and gets out into the wide open ocean, which, by the way, he has no idea where he is. Yeah. I mean, if you don't get emotional when he's when he loses Wilson, you need to go. You need to get yourself. Yeah, checked. I mean, right. you. And by that, I mean, Nick, you need to get yourself checked. <laughs> I mean, that, to me, that's 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 one of the most important things about the movie is it's able to make you emotional about him losing Exactly. A volleyball. It's exactly. And that's a testament to, to Tom Hanks, to his acting. Did he get nominated? I know he didn't win for that. Did he get nominated? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I think he got win. nominated, but no, he didn't win. He didn't win. He had two Oscars prior to that, uh, yep. one of which is on my options. Yes. But he, yeah. um, yeah. God damn it. I knew our list would be similar, but this one's not on my list. So that's good. Elliot. That's, that's the way it's not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love it, man. I mean, it's a little long, you know, I just, I, but. I mean, come on, man. When you when you think overcoming the odds, this is one man that's just trying to survive in just the craziest elements that you could think. I mean, Matt, put yourself in that situation, guys, on a deserted island with literally nothing, you know, and just having to to make it and being able to survive that and come back home. And then, you know, it's redemption for him. And it's like, you know, once he's back home, I mean, his wife has moved on. You know, he doesn't he feels like he doesn't know anyone because he's two or three years removed from everyone. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's a tough story. And and Tom Hanks really sells it. I hope he got nominated for that at a minimum because uh, just a tremendous performance by Hanks there. But that's my number four, Castaway. No crossover there, Justin. So you're up, man. Yeah, so, so we're good. So this, has not been mentioned yet, I'm guessing. So this one uh, is probably going to be considered a little low on my list by some people, but it's for Frank Darabont's The Shawshank Redemption. Um, there's there's not anything I could say that ha- hasn't already been said about this movie. It's a, considered a classic. It's definitely, in my opinion, I think Tim Robbins' best performance, if, uh, you know, one of his best performances, if not his best performance. And, you know, it's a guy that got sentenced to murder when uh, and, and sent to prison when he didn't do it. 
uh, and he has to overcome that and live live the prison life. And then, of course, we all know how that ends. If you haven't seen the movie, I really don't want to spoil it for you because it's kind of a shocker. Um, but it's a, it's a great human story about two guys overcoming the odds inside prison, um, mm-hmm. having a yeah. bond together. And I, I just love it. And I think it's a beautiful movie. Uh, and this is coming from someone that has may have or may not have spent some time in a similar place and situation. Mm-hmm. So I can awesome. relate. I can relate. Uh, it's Stephen King too. Yeah. And, Stephen uh, King. Yeah. Uh, come on, man. But Hey, guess what? It's my number three. Are you shocked? No, oh, <laughs> God damn it. See, you know, that's why I should have, I sh- we should have compared lists prior to this. We should have, you know, I knew Nick would not match up. I don't think Nick is going to have or would have had any of my five. Nick, so far, do you have any of ours? Rudy, definitely would not. Have, Castaway, I've never even seen. Uh, not surprised. <laughs> not surprised. Wait, what else? Oh, was, man. What else was? Okay. What, did, what did he just Shawshank mention? Redemption. Shawshank. Oh, Shawshank. Shawshank. I, I do love Shawshank. But see, I, like, I it's super inspirational, but like, I like, I don't. No, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to separate the two, and I'm finding like I'm trying to look up movies. I'm like, it, that's not a thing. Well, he, you know, he over, I mean, he overcomes the odds, and it's inspirational because Andy Dufresne's innocent, you know, and yeah, everybody in that prison says they're innocent, but he actually is, and you, as the viewer, you know, he is, and he endures decades. Yeah, that is in true. a prison. Oh, that one would make my list. I would have put that one and, on my list somewhere. And and to say, damn the man, the way he did, and and get out the way he did, like Justin said, not to give too too much away, but. I mean, Stephen King's at the heart of it, and it's just, I mean, Morgan Freeman, one of his all-time performances. Uh, one also, of the, think, probably the best Tim Robbins, too, right? Yeah, just, I, think it's, I think it's his best. And also, I think it's amazing that it's directed by Frank Darabont, who is a, a guy, he's an early Nightmare on Elm Street alum. Um, he had his hand in uh, scripts for <laughs> Dream Warriors. So he, yeah. he's a guy that he worked on Freddy, too. So he's a horror, horror guy at heart, and he did an amazing job directing that movie. So there's a lot of love I, there. I agree, man. You know, um, Drew, who's in the chat, we did uh, we we recently did a countdown, or I believe it was Drew. It may have been Tony, but we did um, movie duos, and I named Andy and Red as one of my favorite movie duos as well because they just build that friendship over so many years. And I mean, it's just it's beautiful to watch. I mean, it's literally just a friendship in the most unlikely of situations. And like, you know, like the list is is saying, you know, he's overcoming the odds there. So Shawshank Redemption is also my number three, Justin. Yep. And I'm going to let you give your number two because my number two is Rudy. Okay. So what, I, what I'll say real quick about Rudy that uh, just why it's on my list. And it's from 1993. Uh, I This is the first movie that I can remember. I'm sure it happened before this. I was like a sophomore in high school when this movie came out. And, you know, so when you're in high school, you try to be tough, right? You don't want anybody to think you're a wuss or whatever, you know. But this is the first movie that I can remember like crying. Like I I was like, I couldn't back tears during this film. It's a very emotional movie. Uh, The theatrics of it are played up a little bit, you know, because at the court, the sports movie. But I mean, Rudy is the poster child, so to speak, for overcoming the odds, you know, 100 percent. Absolutely, man. And him getting carried off the field and Charles S. Dutton kind of standing in the tunnel there and, and giving his applause kind of like to himself you know and you can see him kind of welling up with emotion because he's been mentoring this kid for several years and to see that culmination before his eyes and then he kind of walks off and he knows like okay this kid's gonna be all right i mean it's an emotional ending to that movie and uh, it's great Uh oh kim and cat stay alive maybe 100 dollar donation thank you so much ladies that was amazing if anybody caught that friday the segment that they did that was so much fun oh it was a blast i love those girls it was absolutely amazing they are wonderful they do such a wonderful show thank you so so much for the donation i got a i got a fun fact about them while we're talking about them because oh go ahead do it Uh, they are uh kim and ket were or how should i how should i phrase this actually uh for them to guest to be on a podcast i was the first host that they guested with two piece amazing they came on about a year ago. So it's did, Gerald uh, trivia, really, is what we're talking about. Gerald I mean, Morris trivia. <laughs> <laughs> but they came on and we did uh, modern horror movies. So movies since the year 2010. That's amazing. Horror movies since the year they are such a blast. That was so much fun. Kat joined us for our 2010 retrospective as well, uh, which was also a lot of fun. I, great, one thing man. about and, Rudy, I want to. I want to. Yes, go ahead. I think I think Rudy has. I mean, and I haven't seen it in, in like an eternity, but like it's one of those movies that like it's based on a true story. But then you, 
like the real Rudy was like a colossal asshole, wasn't he? Like, uh, that's yeah, what I mean, I've they, always heard. They, I read that as well. They hype it up for the theat for the dramatic yeah. effect of the film. Uh, but I did hear he was a little standoffish. I read that yeah. as well. That it wasn't Just nearly, the- and that kind of that always, <clears throat> you know, warns me away from this, from the from from movies like like that where it's like, yeah, it's a good movie and it's so inspirational and stuff. But like, but man, it, that dude was a piece of shit. <laughs> It, well, it's just, it's just like American Sniper, Chris Kyle, or whatever. Like that dude was a real piece of shit. But the movie that, with Bradley Cooper in it, I mean, it's hailed by many people as a classic and inspirational and a true American patriot. And but the dude in real life was like a complete piece of shit. So I get it. I totally get it. I try to separate the two things. I mean, unless they're trying to market it as the true story, like I mean, that's really like a, a big part of what the movie's uh, being represented as. Then if it's not, just like based on a true story like in one part of it that's it that's fine well, you want to talk about that's inspirational you know what would have made, made my list probably would have been like my number one of my number two what? lord of the rings return of what? the king also sean Astin. Jesus. Okay. also right. sean Astin. you want to no. talk about overcoming the odds you hoist frodo up on your fucking shoulder and carry his ass up that volcano to throw the ring in there that's <laughs> overcoming the odds baby yeah i'll say that's an interesting <laughs> choice i yeah. didn't even think of that yeah Way fucking better than Rudy, too. <laughs> if you say so. Hey, if you say so. I love you. All right, I'm going uh, to let Justin. I think, Justin, you're giving your number two. Real quick, I want to tell Kim uh, from Kim and Ket that The Witch is an amazing horror film, and that's why it was my number one. Okay. And she'll get that inside joke there. because The Witch kinda- is a beautiful film. God damn it, Gerald. Why, why didn't you make this horror-related? I know. Why didn't Come I? Come well, on. I didn't know Nick wasn't participating. That's maybe what it was. was. It's my fault, yeah. damn it. It, oh, it, it, it. You know, it is It is Nick's fault. I blame him. And I have the studded belt here, and I'm going to drive up there after the segment's over, and I'm going to whip it so fucking hard with that studded belt. <laughs> Give it to him, brother. And yeah, make sure that spank you with the belt now. So, yeah. Right. What's your number two, man? All right. My number two is a movie that is Nick's, one of Nick's favorite movies that he just kind of argued that it's not overcoming the odds or inspirational in some way, but it is. It's Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life. I mean, why not? Yeah. yeah literally. What's overcoming the odds about it? He's overcoming yeah. himself, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're often overcoming odd, your own personal <laughs> problems, depression. Uh, dude, that's one of the biggest things you can overcome. I agree. It's an abstract view on the topic. Yeah, of course. Absolutely no reason why you no, could say it's very you know, inspirational and I adore it, but battle within it's, for me, it's half and half. Like I'm 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 doing half of overcoming the odds, half inspirational. To me, it's like it's all part of the same thing. So, you know, <clears> in a way. Whatever. I love this movie, and you should be proud of me for putting it on my list because I know how that much you adore it. That is actually a great I do kind adore of it. it's tidbit. Justin's putting a wonderful life on his list for you there. That's good. Nick, why, I, I think everybody that listens to Epic Film Guys knows, but I mean, that's like your favorite movie, right? I mean, I've heard you mention that five, six times. Fa- favorite movie, no, but I mean, it's definitely up there. Definitely up, it's there. up there. It's got to be up there. For Would you, you say it's in top 10, Nick, maybe? Sorry for messing up the screen. Emily Porkchop, what did you do? Emily Porkchop <laughs> ruined it. What did she mess up? She put something in the, in the chat where she messed up a screen. What screen? <laughs> What is she? <laughs> I don't. Uh, oh, Kimmy B. Ha. <laughs> She's is saying that, that because of the wit, by the way. <laughs> is that what that is? The wit. The, uh, <laughs> Justin, 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 I don't know if you listened to that episode. The Witch was my number one modern horror movie since, you know, since anything's been released since 2010. And Kim hates it. I know that you. we have talked on many occasions via Facebook Messenger, and The Witch has yeah. come up on numerous occasions. Uh, when yeah. I saw it, I had no expectations for it at all, and I was pretty blown away by it. I just there's a lot of things I like about it, and it's very different from what you would see turned out in the horror genre. Much like my admiration of Hereditary, I like s- stuff that's different. I get that it's not for everybody, but that ending alone is like worth the whole buildup of the movie yeah. for me. My so. list was pretty much not for, my, Hereditary was my two, so my list was kind of yeah. that. Yeah, like, see, you kind of really had to be in the middle. We, we, see, you and I would not be able to do a podcast. I don't think I we just agree way like, too often. Maybe like our just donation to message. Talking. Kim said our donation message was sp- message was special for you. Hashtag fuck cancer. Hashtag fuck Fred the movie. And hashtag fuck the witch. <laughs> uh, Emily, no, we we're the, the we have just a live stream for the oh, cure thing God. up on the screen. The green room is uh to test your settings and stuff like that. You don't need to use Discord at all for anything. <laughs> Guys, Emily from the story behind is coming up. I will be watching that. Stick around for that. I absolutely adore her as I know the epic film guys do She's too. A She's a national treasure. Can we get a holiday for Emily? 
please. One of the all times. The story behind why much, how much we love her. That's what we need. Yeah, we wouldn't be what we are without her, honestly. So that's, that's just the straight truth of it. It's true. Love we her. love you, Kim. Thank you so much. And yeah, absolutely. All right. What, what are we doing, Justin? We got five minutes. We're doing our number ones, right? Because my number two is Rudy. Yep. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Anyone that knows me knows this is going to be my number one. This is one thing that will never change. This is a movie that's inspired me, continues to inspire me. This is like the easy number one, right? It's the easy one, but you know what? There literally is a movie that makes me as inspired where the character has to overcome the odds. It literally is. This is definitely a top 10 movie for me. You know, I love Stallone. He's one of my favorites. And there's, and literally this, this is not just the movie itself, but Stallone is a person making this living in a tiny apartment, eating like bologna on hand, getting the offer of $300,000 to, to give the script away. But he wanted to be part of the movie. He said, no, I'll hold out, man. You're not getting this script without me in the role. It's a true underdog story in real life. Then we see it through the she film as well. So it's, it's it's perfect. I, there's there, there's I, not one wrong thing with Rocky to me. I think it's a flawless film. I agree. It's hilarious that we're matching up on everything because I specifically Rocky off because I knew you would pick it. It's on my honorable mentions. Oh, how kind of you. And then of course we matched like all the other ones, so it didn't really matter. But no, not at all. But imagine <laughs> if our lists were like literally. I mean, it's pretty much <laughs> almost the same. Yeah. Well, that's a great pick, uh, Nick. Do I don't know this actually. You're a fan of Rocky, Nick, or no? What the yeah, oh the first one yeah yeah yeah, yeah I don't think I've seen any of the sequels I've seen like a third of Rocky Four but I've never seen any of the other ones except for obviously Creed and Creed Two but Creed yeah. Two yeah well yeah a great uh, just a great uh, just a great franchise yeah, but first the first Rocky's one the great had- movie great movie. Yeah. Oscar, it's an Oscar winner, right, Justin? Fuck yeah, or, yeah. that's right. Yeah, one best picture, which still to this day, a, a lot of cinephiles out there uh, give it a lot of shit for. They, they, a lot of people still don't believe that it deserved to win. I disagree. It did deserve to win, um, and Stallone deserved all the recognition he got from that. That if without this movie, Stallone wouldn't ever have done anything with his career. I don't think he would have ever been successful. So we have Rocky yeah. to thank for that. It definitely started his whole. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So Rocky would have been in my top five. I left it out as my honorable My number one. All right. I'm excited. Nobody mentioned this. So this is in my. I would say, so of my list and including honorable mentions, this is the only movie that falls in my top 10 movies of all time. Ooh. Uh, I submitted this list to Wayne and Paul, and I can't remember what number it was. I want to say it was like five or six of all time. But I feel like it it falls into the brief here. So my number one is from 1997. It's Goodwill Hunting is my number one. Uh, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, who I know Nick will <laughs> love that I put Ben Affleck's my list. Uh, for some reason, they have a hard on one. But, uh, I mean, this screenplay is what kind of catapulted their career in cinema. But this movie is one of my favorite movies, man. It takes place in Boston. I have a lot of friends from Boston. My dad was born in Worcester, which is very close oh to Boston. Oh, my God. It's Emily Porkchop. Oh, did and I make it okay? Behind. You know, oh, it's best just... selling author. It, it's a <laughs> tremendous story about overcoming the odds because Matt Damon's character has always been told that, you know, okay, Emily, he's got to... Uh, you're going to be going live here in a minute. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I messed up. I thought I had to go on Discord. He's got to be here. Yeah, yeah we, we can hear her. hear her now. Yeah, Geraldo, because Geraldo's still in the guest. Oh, yeah. Gerald, get out of the green room. I thought I was. Uh, can you hear her now or not? I thought Emily was joining our convo. I, you guys I was were... confused there, man. Yeah. What? In the... I thought Emily loved Goodwill Hunting so much. She jumped in. My fault. Tell Dan, happened, I'm sorry. That has happened so many times the this tell weekend. I where... did. Tell him I did. Tell him it's his fault because I was waiting for him for an hour and he never showed up. And I That's just true. Waited. Gerald was waiting for you forever and you never came for him. I did come for him. Come here. So my number one is Good Will Hunting. Real quick, what do you guys think about it? My kids are going to come say hello because we I only got them in. I, a great movie. Dan, be quiet. One of my favorite performances from Robin Williams of his entire career. Right here, say hello. To, get on camera. So this is my five-year-old Logan. You remember last year, guys, the pick with the beer? Yeah. Uh, yep. yeah. You still got that. So Logan was in that. And then. There's a spider on your computer. Oh, I hate spiders. All right. Hold on. Here's the baby. Here's baby Gerald. All right. Hold on. Let me get him in here. Now, a donation. I think we should get a donation for this baby. Am I right? We should oh. get a donation for that baby. Go get a Sharpie like- and draw a beard on that baby. Oh, my God. Seriously. Literally like- spitting image. If Dude, he had teeth, he doesn't have it. teeth. Gerald, knock all your teeth out. It'll be spitting image. <laughs> we have the same hairdo. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's it. it literally. And so he's got adorable. a bad, bad uh, onesie on, Justin. You'll like that. Hells yeah, dude. All right, look, dude, I love the epic film, guys. We didn't get time to do honorable mentions, but I love you guys. Uh, Thank you so much, Gerald. Coming back in June. Yeah, I'll be back in June. Yep. Just go to Twitter. Just oh, go. Tell oh, them where to go on Twitter. Logan. And we'll do something else soon, Gerald. You and I will do something. Oh, absolutely, man. I can't wait. Uh, just two go to peas. two peas on a pod on Twitter. That's T W O spelled out. We Follow us you. on Twitter for updates, but we'll be back in about three weeks with a new episode with our buddy Jeff from Cadavercast. We love you. Now, Gerald, get out. Leave the baby. Say, say bye. <laughs> just let him. We're going to let the baby host the rest of the show. I'll just leave him here. All right. I love you, dude. <laughs> Peace out. Love you too, bro. Thank you so you much, guys. Gerald.